Um, all right, so time is 9.38. 9.38. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> that looked kind of big. 9.38. Uh, pack and list is done. Everything's packed up. What would you Listing. say, what would you say uh, pound-wise we're sitting at? Um, well, now that I swapped out that hard case. Did you do the bubble wrap? No, but I'll find some. Probably put like a towel in there. Oh, are you doing the softer case? Yeah, now that's probably going to drop. Eight pounds, so I'm probably still sitting with water, 40, 45. Probably 40. Yeah, I'm doing the same. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be going tomorrow, doing our, I guess this is going to be an annual thing. Our first year was last year. I uh, did 30 miles from, uh, was it Miramar we started in? We did Miramar to was Panama City. Miramar to Panama City, essentially Destin, 30 miles on the beach. Uh, we wanted to do something a little bit more challenging i guess uh distance wise um maybe we're maybe we're underestimating this but uh but we're doing because last year fucking sucked dude. last year was bad dude <laughs> yeah i thought we'd be all right uh, actually i was good except my feet i wore the wrong boots yeah i wore did. the wrong kind of boots you honestly did. i shouldn't even worn boots you did a lot better than i did i was my feet were fucked. Yeah. Cause like I kept getting sand that trickled in and it would get in the front of my boot and just push on my foot. I ended up losing both of my toenails and they That's just gross. now came back and I'm about to just lose them again, dude. Yeah. So, but yeah, we wanted to do something a little bit more challenging in terms of elevation uh, length. We wanted to kind of turn it into a couple day trip. So we're starting at Appalachian uh, Trailhead, which is up in Springer Mountain. And we're doing 51 miles, man. 51 miles in uh, about two and a half days. Is it two and a half? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's about two. No. Maybe three days. Yeah, it's going to be three days. Yeah, three days. Three days, two, uh, two nights. Which is, I really don't think it's going to be that bad. I think tomorrow's going to suck because we're doing 20 tomorrow. Yeah. That's a big stretch. But yeah. I think it's good to get out all those miles on day one rather than drag it out the next two days. Well, that was my, that was my initial, uh, that was my initial thinking when I was planning out our route. I was like, Hmm, we could, we could split it evenly three days, but I was like day one, we're probably going to feel the best. We're going to be hydrated the best, uh, stomach full of food. Let's do the most miles on day one. And I think it, I think it will, I think it will pay off. I can't, I, dude, I already can't wait to get to the rest spot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, I can't ready. wait to bed down already, dude. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that's going to be, that's going to be a super cool part, too, because I was thinking about that today. Um, like, doing this, because the whole Destin thing was fun. It was fun to, like, challenge ourselves and just put us, like, in the worst possible fucking ruck of our lives. But there was really no, there was really no end state or end goal. It was just, like, we're done, right? But, like, here... Doing this up in the mountains, up in the Appalachian Trail, yeah, it's going to be awesome to get to our first campsite and be able to set up camp, fucking get the jet boil going, get some food going, play some music, read a book, and then watch the sunset. Do another um, podcast. Maybe even do another podcast, yeah. but then watch the sunset. So that's what I'm looking forward to the most. Is yeah, that's going to be sick. Chill just time chilling too. on like a cliff and just looking out and then just talking dude that's gonna be sick because yeah. dude on the beach dude it was straight <laughs> under the sun straight soft sand for 25 miles like that was awful dude man there was one point last year i'm telling and i've told you this before dude if that was like uh, a challenge i would have attempted on my own i think i think i would have quit i would have hit a point probably around 22 or you would have been a lot slower. Or I just, I don't know, dude. But basically having you there, having that accountability and seeing how well you were doing, I was like, fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I got to keep going, dude. But there was a stretch, dude, for about a mile uh, where it was after I had taken my third dip, right? I It was when you made the funny towel video of me picking up. And we did a mile <laughs> stretch, yeah, dude, dude, where it, the sun had no clouds. It was beating on us. Oh, and it was the so thickest hot. sand. And I had taken that towel and I had wrapped it around my throat, like, kind of tight. And then I had bitten down on it. And for a mile, dude, I was just literally and like pain, grinding, grinding, grinding my towel. teeth. And uh, not to mention your glasses broke. You had sweat in your eye. Yeah, that, that was <laughs> early, that was earlier on. But uh, 
No, seriously. Like looking back at that and thinking about all the other like painful, you know, moments I've had of like physically like pushing myself, you know, past my limits of what I think I can do. That one mile stretch was it for me. It was the worst thing I've ever endured. I wanted to quit more than anything. Dude, in my the last life. the last two miles when we finally switched to that hard ball. Um, that, that was also bad. That 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 was trek vibes dude my feet felt like the trek and that dude oh my god like every step was just like needles shooting straight into my feet i was not i didn't do any train up for that zero there's zero train up for this dude i haven't yeah. worked out in two months and i'm about to just go i haven't put a ruck on in like a year that's true for half. you so like this is gonna suck but i mean i'm in the gym right doing my wads and my crossfit but this is this is different. It's different. It, it, it is. But that's, I really do think that that's one thing me, you, and honestly, anybody that's physically fit and in the military and some sort of combat, combat support role who's been in the woods with massive amount of weight on, we just, we can, we can go several months without doing it and do just, it and yeah. just be good. Cause we're just, we're just kind of used to it. Yeah. Like your body is definitely adapted to it. Like... I don't know. I don't think like if someone like who's never done something like this, we just brought him along. Like we've brought Malcolm. Like yeah. I wonder how he would hold out, or just anybody who isn't used to that type of type of like environment. Yeah. Like the longevity of being out in the woods and physically doing things that could fatigue you is different than just going camping for like a little fucking backpack stroll. Like I completely, totally I completely agree. Yeah, it's funny you bring it up like that because me uh, and my buddy. He was the guy who was supposed to come over last night. Uh, he's an infantry guy. I love Bravo, now EW. And um, we had gone out to do our field exercise a couple weeks ago. And he was, we were just kind of talking, like, people who aren't familiar with walking in the woods all day. Like, you don't, you don't really think, like, it's that big of a deal. But then you throw, you know, you throw an assault pack or a ruck on your back and, and kit and, and a weapon. And you walk around for two miles, dude, and you're... Zapped. Yeah, yeah, you're zapped. zapped. I mean, patrolling is totally different, though. It is because you're you are totally getting up, a, you're getting up, you're getting down, you're pulling security, you're moving around, you're doing a lot of shit. Yeah, too. like you also with with patrolling, like there's a lot that you're thinking about, and like when you're when you're thinking about so many things at once, like that can physically fatigue you, also. Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> I don't know, but we're not patrolling. <laughs> we're, we're not. We're, and we have, we're on no time limit. We're not patrolling. We're the only time limit we dude. have is the last day because we have to be at our pickup site by 5. Yeah. But it's 15 miles, so we have a lot of leeway to just kind of chill. But pretty much the whole, the, the whole point that I want to do is every year do a different environment. So last year was like the beach, the ocean side. This mm -hmm. year we're doing like the mountains. Montana is going to be the mountains again. However, I Fuck, think dude. Are it's going to be do some Arctic shit next we're year. We're going to do like cold weather. So like Alaska, uh, that we'll, may be my catalyst. We'll do that's going to suck. That's going to be the my cold catalyst, sucks. dog. I we're going to do like a cold. jungle and then like a desert and then we'll switch to, I want to do like a hundred mile, like canoe type thing. Yeah. I really like down a you, river. Yeah. You brought that idea up. That I know some guys who really, did that. Really cool. Um, maybe like a, bike ride i don't know how you would pack for a bike ride as well so maybe i don't know that might be different you could it's do multiple, it you just it, have it's, to plan your your route out but it's uh, things that well. are going to take multiple days that's the point like you can't do it in a day and that's the challenging part is like camping out where you're like you're really not going to get the best sleep and you're not going to have the most food so like you're Correct. kind of fatiguing yourself so the next day you got to do it again like it's just something hard but yeah. every environment must be conquered I think it'd be really sick if we got uh, our skydiving certs and jumped into where we're going to hike. <laughs> that would yeah, be sick, dude. dude. Uh, that would also <laughs> suck jumping that, that can, heavy of a fucking Can rock. civilians jump with a load? Yeah. Can you? I don't even know. Pretty sure. How would you rig it? Well, I mean, you probably have. It's to not buy. the same harness. You, yeah, I don't, you'd, I don't know. You'd have to. You'd have to somehow. Oh, that would be sick. You'd have to tactically acquire uh, a freefall rig uh, from the military. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, so I want to kind of get. I want to get into the meat and potatoes of why why we kind of started doing this 
or I why don't fucking know. why we want to. Well, if you don't have an answer, I definitely. I just like to do it, dude. I definitely have one. I mean, I like to do it too, right? I love to get outdoors. I love to stay moving. Um, but so I had originally brought up the idea to Ashton about two years ago. So we did the Destin hike uh, last year, and then the year before that, we were in Destin. Uh, Ashton's family takes a trip up there every summer. And we were up there, and we were just kind of shooting the shit on the beach, and I was like, bro, we should definitely just pick a day and do, like, a ruck from here to Destin. And he was like, yeah, we should do that. We almost pulled the trigger and did it that year. Thank God we didn't. We waited till next year. We did it. We sucked. Uh, and then we started planning this one. But for me, especially after that whole experience doing the Destin thing, it's a way that I can... It's going to sound fucking super cheesy, dude, and it's going to be on some Goggin shit. <laughs> but it, in a way, it really is a great way for me to push myself past certain limits. Um, I know last year I did, and I didn't really think it was going to be that. I knew it was going to suck. I knew it was going to be hard. But after completing it, I was like, I want more of that, and I want to do that again. And I like pushing myself past these mental boundaries that I know I have physically and, you know, it just strengthens my mind, makes me more confident. And I don't know, dude, there's something there's something about my personality and other guys can agree. But when I put my body through a significant amount of like pain or long enduring pain for a physical extent and I'm done, I feel fucking amazing. And I feel yeah. super accomplished. And it just, you know, that's one of those things. So that's kind of why I like doing this. That's why I want to continue to do stuff like this. And I love the idea of us doing some sort of different environment every year. That's yeah, because that away cool. you don't like get that used away, to it. it. You don't get used to it, and it's something new, and it's a new challenge because, like, a jungle compared to the desert is a completely different planning process. You have to really be, I mean, I don't know. It's just, you can't really, if, I've never been in a jungle like the fucking Amazon. So, you know, I don't even know how we would plan that. We'd probably have to take somebody who is a local. Just go to Hawaii, dude. Or, oh, yeah, we could do Hawaii. Yeah, that's where jungle school it's, is. For me, it's an excuse to travel. I can keep the, like, mental momentum of, like, trying to push myself and, yeah. like, stay in that mindset and not just let the past decade go to waste of all the fucking shit I've done. And, dude, I'm not, like, looking for it, but, like, a sponsor if, like, somehow raise money to some cool cause, like the Green Beret Foundation or Navy SEAL Foundation or yeah. like Wounded Warriors Project or something, like just to donate somehow, like that would be sick. Or just not and just do it just fucking because. But I like to just check out of like, like reality. Like when I'm out in the jungle or in the mountains or in the desert, like there's no other thing that matters except like getting to our point. And like one foot in front of the other. That's it. It's days. like right there. What you're doing is all that you need to worry about. It's a good no point. cell phones. It's a good point. I'm checked. Like I'm just out of the matrix, dude. That's nice. Then you yeah. come back kind of refreshed. You've conquered something. I don't know. That's nice. That's a good. No, that's a good thing too. Uh, you just said refreshed. Almost like, like my battery's been charged. And I definitely or depleted or <laughs> depleted. I mean, either or though. Like I don't know. My battery was was pretty depleted last time but no i definitely i need i need something like this i'm not gonna go into detail what's going on in my life but like everything that's kind of happened the past month i was like man three days in the woods with 50 pounds on my back for an extended period of time i need dude it just gives you time to think like i don't i feel like a lot of people don't have time to think anymore i know that there's I'm, so I'm much guilty. stimulus every day from this fucking thing or the thing that we're this talking thing, into and just your job that like you don't really have time to just collect yourself and look back on everything and evaluate yourself from a third person view but like when you're just kind of walking dude or running whatever like you can really think about it and i don't know process and it and process get it, it without any like outside influence uh, or just something taking you away from focusing on it. Like, it's kind of nice. 
Now, I'll agree to that to a certain extent, yes, but then you also hit the point of pain. And that's all And you then you do. just forget about it. Like, dude, that doesn't even matter. Like, <laughs> I'm hurting right now. That's all you think like, about. My shoulders is are killing step. me, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. That was the best part about training, dude, is like, when we got to McCall, nothing mattered. You had no phone. It was just mission focus, and you just completely checked out from reality. Dude, we would get back and, like, have no idea what was going on in the world. Like six to eight weeks at a time, like the world's already changed. You don't know what's going on politically. Like you have no idea what your family's been doing. Like yeah. nothing mattered at, except for what you were doing. It's like the same thing. And like that's that's really nice. And I think more people need to do that. Maybe that's a that's a cool reason to do it. It's just to like get other people outside more and just you know not and just know that like. Your job is not the only important thing. Like your your relationship with your wife is important, but like it's also like another thing, right? There's other, you know, worry about yourself sometimes. You know, I don't know. You gotta take care of you. Take care of you. It's gonna be fun, dude. Um I wanna circle back to you talking about uh the planning piece. So last year wasn't really a lot of planning. We knew that we were gonna do the Destin thing. So, I mean, we took our rucks down. We, we grabbed, Ashen grabbed his med kit, some IVs. I grabbed a camelback. And I mean, the planning wasn't that difficult because we knew, hey, we're going from this point to this point. We're doing it one day. We're around, you know, a civilian population. Water will be fine. We won't, we won't be that bad. So planning wasn't, wasn't really that uh, into detail. Uh, this year, we had to do a little bit more. Um, we had to specifically plan our route out. We had to think about water points. If there were water points, I had to confirm or deny if they were there. Um, we had to almost kind of like time, like, hey, at this mile marker, we may be black on water. Is there a river nearby where we can use our filtration system? So there's just a lot more planning going into this. And it's crazy, dude. Like, I guess you just don't think about it until you start doing it. But I've got like a lot of respect for people who backpack and shit because there is a massive amount of planning and, and, a, and a thought process of, man, a checks and balances system, a fucking PCC, PCI checklist that you have to but do. But I, I wonder how many of those people actually go into detail like we do just because of our training. Uh, well, you know I, I mean? honestly, I, I feel like the people, or at least the people who get lost and stranded or Well, yeah, they attacked, probably don't do shit. They didn't think about all these contingencies and stuff, so. Well, what I'm saying, though. But the professionals, experience, think, Experienced backpackers yeah. who, who do trails like this and go for days at a time and camp, you have to think like that. They probably don't at first, right? So maybe we do have a little bit of an upper leg just because of, yeah. you know, military training or it's just engraved in us that we know, but... You do it one time and you're like, okay. Wow, I forgot that's... to do this. I forgot yeah. to do that. A little hot wash. But yeah, I was just surprised at the amount of planning uh, that me and Ashen had to do. And then, uh, you know, it kind of gave me a lot of respect for people people who do that i was just very surprised and i was like dude this is a lot more shit i mean than it I really thought that it we really came to do it really came down to three things like all right we need, we're gonna need water it's summer it's hot like you just you're gonna have three days you're not gonna be able to carry that much it's water be on you so fucking hot um obviously your route you need to know where you're going and then along that route you need to have checkpoints to understand where you are within that route so that you don't get lost or if something happens you know uh, some kind of contingency plan on where we need to go in that event. So like a black and gold type plan, right? Yeah. Hey, we've reached this peak. That means that there's this peaks down here and this peak has a four way intersection where there's going to be people. And then we just had to figure out where we're going to bed down at night so that we could actually rest and eat food and stuff. So your route, water, food, shelter, like that's kind of all you're trying to figure out. And then other things like safety, uh, being that we're in the Appalachian Trail, it's Wildlife. pretty it's pretty populated. Um, so like I don't know, I'm not too worried about like it, it's not as remote as a lot of other places. But yeah, there's wildlife. Uh, you need to be aware. So like I'm bringing a pistol, you know, something to defend yourself. Um, you know, some kind of tool. Uh, dude, I don't know what else. Well, I mean, for this one in particular, it's not as crazy as like our plan for Montana. Like Montana is going to be the, that's another level, the like, big one. Because the Bob Marshall Wilderness Complex is one of the most remote locations in the Lower Forty Eight. It has like the most concentrated area of grizzly bears in the Lower Forty Eight. So 
that takes a lot of planning and I mean, there's nothing around there. So now you gotta coordinate with rescue teams. You gotta have a Garmin on you that has SATCOM communications. Gotta have a SAT phone. Like you gotta have something to be able to communicate at any moment. Bug. Yeah. And then that you're gonna have to really plan your trail and your route because I don't know if all the trails are like actually there. Walked on because it's so remote. It's too. so remote. How often are people walking there? Like you're probably gonna end up following like a game trail where just deer or bears constantly go and then now you got to be thinking about well shit if this game trail is here then most likely the wildlife is around here too yeah so just little that's little things that come with experience and then like if you were to just go out there and just walk the bob marshall and you've never even been to the woods and camping dude like Stupid. you're fucked you're, yeah. you're so done. honestly and in a way, I'm glad that, uh, you know, everybody that was supposed to do the Montana trip with us kind of fell through. So that way we can do this. This is, you know, a little bit of an intermediate. We've got a trail the whole time we're going to be on. Uh, pretty populated because we're starting at the start point. Um, so, yeah, it'll be a good, a good uh, you know, intro, I guess, for us to eventually, yeah. eventually get there. I, I would have been down for just both of us doing that. Um, but just like not as far. I, I, <laughs> but I, I was the not, more, I will tell you, but then I was the, fucking not okay with that. The more I thought about it and then the more I talked to buddies who had been out there, like it makes sense to have more people with us just to have that security. That way, like there's always, you know, at least four people, everybody has a buddy no matter where they go. Say someone's got to go down to like the stream to get water while we set up camp. There's always somebody with you. Yeah. And we're like, you know, even at night, if that's we, that a fucking fire guard shift, dude. like a fire guard shift, like someone's staying up, like maybe like, hey, every God three hours, bears, wake bro. somebody up just to make sure. Then like, even out there, you got to think about like where your camp's at. Like you have to prioritize where you're going to go to the bathroom, yeah. where you're going to eat, where you're going to hang up all your supplies because bears and shit are going to fucking, <laughs> they're going to smell that and you don't want a bear in your camp in your sleep. Like, that's horrifying. Dude, imagine just hearing <sighs> right outside your tent, dude. That's oh, why, sh that's why, <laughs> that's why I was not okay. <laughs> Look, <laughs> there, freaky, there, there's, there's bears, right? Wolves, dude, I don't, I mean. Well, hold on. There's, there's bears, right? A bear is a fucking bear. But there is a massive difference between a black bear and a grizzly bear, bro. Yeah. And you just... A black bear is just a big-ass dog. I mean, it is. A and grizzly bear... Fuck you up, but a grizzly bear is, is... like... There's reasons sports teams are named the fucking grizzlies, dude. Yeah, like, they, fucking... they have massive talents. Bro, I've seen talons on grizzly bears like this long. Yeah. Like if, a foot long. Dude, people who imagine. haven't seen a grizzly bear in person don't realize how big a grizzly bear is. When they stand up, dude, they're 12 feet tall. Yeah, when they're on their, when they're on their two. Yeah, that's... A basketball goal is 10 feet. Imagine that. Like, it's to the backboard. But, dude, that's huge. Not to mention that they're... They weigh over a ton, dude. Like, that's horrifying. Yeah, so... And they could run, like, 45 miles an hour. Up dude, trees! I remember, <laughs> I remember uh, Ashton called me. This was a couple months ago before we were planning on doing the Appalachian Trail. And he's like, yeah, dude, every, everybody's bailing on, uh, on, on the Montana trip. It's just, you know, we got too many guys going here, too many guys going there. It just can't happen. I was like, all right, dude, I'm out. And he's like, dude, me and you go. I was like, absolutely not, bro. <laughs> I am not fucking doing two dudes well, uh, for the, 60 remote miles. The biggest thing for that was like the logistics because the logistics we, would have been we had to, very hard too. We had to fly to Helena and then somehow get dropped off wherever. So we had to rent like a place to stay for a night and somehow find our way back. Like the, the transportation was kind of an issue. Uh, I don't know. We'll have yeah. to figure that out. And that's what I'm saying, even to circle back to just planning and logistics for something. Like, it seems like, yo, let's go do this, and it should be this easy. But, like, when you kind of take a step back and go, all right, what do I need? What is everything that we have to do to prep to get there? And then what is everything that we need to have on us to sustain? It's it's quite a bit. It's a, it, it was a lot, and it was pretty surprising. But we're going to fucking send it anyways, baby. Dude, we're good, good, though. Dude. We're good. I really do feel good. I'm fucking I'm excited, man. Um, I'm I've just been, excited to camp, dude. I've been I am to also excited to camp. Forever. But uh, I'm just excited to, I told you earlier, I'm excited to get to mile 10. and Because we're doing 20 tomorrow, right? And whenever you're rucking, I know at least for me, like 
if it's 12 and I get to six and I'm feeling good and I'm like, oh yeah, baby, next six is going to be a breeze. So I know that when we get to 10 mile eight and you're like, I know when we get to 10 tomorrow, I will be able to immediately tell you how the next 10 are going to go. Yeah. Just based off of the first 10, I'll be able to look at you and go, man, I am, I'm good. Or this is going to suck. I'm hurt. Yeah, but we're going to take a lot more breaks because it's oh, a yeah. scenic route. The scenic route, we have, we're stepping off at 8, 8, all right, so 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We've got nine hours, nine hours to go 20 miles. Last year, we did 30 on the sand and what, 10 hours? So yeah. we'll make it there and we'll be at a good pace. Um we really, so we we looked at an elevation map. We don't know how accurate it is. It's one we found online. I think it's pretty accurate. Uh, yeah, I think so too. We were tracing a lot of the contour lines. Um, the good thing about, from at least what I saw and what we saw, kind of mapping our route out, is the at least the first 50 miles, we're already kind of on top of the mountain. Not necessarily on a ridge, um, but it's not a lot of like, up and down. I mean, it is, right? But it's only usually a, a couple hundred feet we're going up and down. Yeah, but dude, down. a couple hundred feet over a quarter mile or a little less or a little more than a quarter mile is a lot. I know it's, it's a pretty a, steep incline. I know it's a lot, but I guess in my head, I was thinking like, we're going to climb up a mile mountain, climb dude, down I a mile. I think we're underestimating up. this right now, dude. No, dude. Oh, it's fine, dude. It's a couple hundred feet, quarter mile, dude. It's like, <laughs> dude, think about a track, but 400 feet. Like that's dude, yeah, but it's over that's like almost like forty five degrees. It's over time, or dude. ninety degrees. Some of the down. some of the contour lines were pretty close together, so yeah, obviously that means it's steeper. Uh, but it looked pretty spaced out. But I don't know. I'm trying to think. The last time I've been at anything of that elevation, um, how Kennesaw Mountain? Is no, the only thing I've kind of done like that. So I was up in Fort Huachuca five years ago, and the si the entire city is about 3,000 feet above sea level. That's where we're gonna be. Um, I remember like the first day I got there, I had walked up uh, a two-story uh, building and I got to the top and I was out of breath and I was like, what the fuck? And then somebody had mentioned me uh, the next day, like, bro, we're up and like, you know, we're about a mile high in elevation and that can, that can change. So I haven't been at a high elevation in a while. I do feel like that's going to take a pretty big toll on us. No, it, it's not. It's not like Colorado. Like you're not going to feel a difference like you would there. You don't think? No, nah, it's not. It's not high enough to actually induce that where you're going to like create more red blood cells and shit. It's not. It's not that high. I think. I don't know. I want to say like that might start at like eight thousand feet. Like mm. it might be. Yeah, you're not going to notice it in the Appalachian Trail. We will say. That's more of an out west thing, which that would be sick. But I don't even, I mean, dude, if we just if we just sent it to Colorado, bro, like, I think you would need to take a couple of days to adapt at least. That yeah. would suck. I think. Uh, Fucking around and get hype and shit. I think, I think our next one should be Arctic. And if it's going to be Arctic, I think we should do it in Colorado. That wouldn't really be Arctic. It would just be cold weather. Cold weather, yeah, I, yeah. Cold, something cold. Arctic, no, I'm not trying to go up to fucking Ford Drum. Um, Mount Rainier would be kind of cool. Cold. Something cold. Um, and just even thinking about that, the logistics is Ooh, even dude, more. Uh, I don't know if you can pull this off, but I've been wanting to go to Iceland oh. because not only is the photography just out there, like, incredible, but it's Iceland. It's another country, dude. And I want to go to those hot springs. Dude, that'd be sick. That'd be sick. I don't know how Oconus sleeve works, but uh, I'd have to submit it a fucking like sixty days in advance. I'd have to do a bunch of briefings, but it can be done, dude. We're also thirty. Uh, we're also probably in the best shape of our lives, and we're gonna be at this for the next ten to twenty years, dude. There's guys like that freaking weirdo dude at REI. Like he was fucking brother. He was hiking around, dude. He was out there. What what was that one fucking funny thing he said, dude? I can't remember. He told me he was gonna sell me kidneys. 
Oh, that, yeah. If I signed up for REI, they're like, I get to buy kidneys and organs. I was like, dude, <laughs> sick. So like, you get 20% off a kidney. I was like, sick. He's like, well, we don't want your thyroid because of all the iodine you've taken. I was like, dude, what the fuck? Yeah, he was a character, dude. You, like, at meeting this guy, it, it's like, all right, I definitely see why you work here. He's, he definitely gave off mad hippie vibes. That guy, 100%. Takes peyote and goes on. Yeah, <laughs> no. And then I said he he was on peyote. He was too. on peyote dude. when we were he, there. That got micro doses cacked out. Oh, <laughs> I told Ashton when we got in the car, I was like, dude, that guy was cool, but he's the kind of guy where you meet on a hike, you hang out with him, and you never want to see him again. Or you never come back home. <laughs> <laughs> never come back just, home. He harvests your organs because he kills you, dude. <laughs> Let's think of some crazy what if scenarios man yeah that's that actually, could potentially let's, let's red hat this yeah like, what are some <laughs> things we're not thinking about um all right let's start moderate one of us fucking you know we're trailing down the mountain we fall we fucking sprain an ankle bad to the point where we can't put pressure on it and walk like we can't continue mission. correct what are we doing uh do you have any painkillers not narcotic painkillers obviously i can't take those yeah, just wrap it up and freaking... Depends on how far out we are and where we are, right? If, like, you would just have to hang back and I would, like, go get help. If we don't have any cell service or anything, then I will just go to the nearest place where there's people and be like, hey, I need to use your phone. And, like, yep. I'd plot your grid coordinate where you are exactly and just have a... And me being... Have a chopper come me being up, the Me being the asshole that I am, I would... I would uh, I would dig a foxhole, and I, would, <laughs> and I would hide in it. And Ash would come back looking for me, dude, and they'd be in, like, just freaking out, and I'd jump out and scare the shit out of you. Dude, what are those things that they used in Vietnam to extract people out of the jungle? Oh. Have you seen that? It's like a huge, it looks like a giant, like, claw, anchor. Like the claw like thing? Claw. Yeah. I forget what they're called. They're not gonna. They're not gonna come do that for me. They showed us they're how to gonna come put me on a stretcher. They, yeah, probably and hike you out. No, they'd probably use a helicopter. Should we bring them. a walk kit with us, dude, with a stretcher? Yeah. Um, All another right, thing, that's that's another moderate. thing I thought about was what do you do if we're both sleeping and like we hear rummaging through our shit and it's a fucking bear? Yeah. All right. Um, th that is something we actually haven't talked about. Uh, I did say it today. Whenever we get to our camp tomorrow, I am putting, I'm probably going to put all my food in a separate bag and I'm going to put it 100 meters away from us. I'm going to hang it in That's a fucking far, tree. Though. That's fine with me. I don't care. I want to keep my stuff near me. I don't think. I'm going to keep my stuff near me. I don't but think all the bear my food. is going to smell our unopened, dried food. I don't know. Maybe. Dude, let's fucking Google it, man. But uh, at least our trash and like used food items, like that needs to be definitely sealed somehow um, or buried. Uh, yeah, I'm, black bears can be kind of skittish too. Like what if I have to like? Okay. Uh, black bear, dude. It's like I'm being in a lot of trouble. Bears cannot smell the contents of a sealed can, but when it comes to creatures with as keen as sense of smell as bears, even sealed food items like dehydrated meals mm. or freeze dried food can carry a scent. Okay. So I'm 100% keeping it. Okay, maybe not 100. 100 is pretty far. We should put it within earshot to where we can he potentially hear. Yeah. Something happening. Line of sight. Um, Ooh, dude. Do you have any chem lights? Just to pop fuck. on our rocks. Damn. Didn't think about that. See? Didn't think about that. I think I have one. One or two on my kit. Uh, yeah, chem lights would have been clutch. I could have easily grabbed those from uh, yeah. my office. Fuck. Well. <laughs> yeah. That, is, that way, like, if you want to go use a bathroom at night, you can. We're going to have a fire going. I don't think. I mean, I don't know. But, yeah, you could just see this, see where you're at. Um, now, too, where Preacher's Rock is, like I told you, it's a it's a heavy foot traffic area. A lot of people come through there. And, I mean, we don't have to sleep. I'm not saying we're going to sleep on the goddamn rock. But we should stay within probably a two, 300-meter radius of that circle, right? And kind of just set up camp maybe off the side a little bit into the woods. But I just, I really do feel like the closer we are to the actual trail, um, 
the safer we will be. I feel like the more, you know, deep we go into the woods, that's us asking for wildlife. Yeah, and like closer to water, definitely, because animals are just going to naturally go to water yeah. and be around water. Uh, well, we still haven't talked that through. What are we going to do, dude? We I think the only thing, we I think the only thing you can do is try it? to scare it off or like... Or just ride it out and see what it does? Just, yeah. just watch what it does, dude. If it's not attacking you, just let the bear be the bear, dude. Let Yogi be Yogi. Fuck, man. But, I'll, I'll fight it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all, if anything comes... The, like, the last thing you want to do is shoot it because then I think you'd be in a lot of fucking trouble. But at least, like, pop a shot in the air... Which is also probably not a good idea, you know, but better than getting attacked by a bear, dude. Better than dying. Okay, so there is this video, right, um, on YouTube. I remember seeing this last year, right? This, this gave me a sense of what a fucking grizzly can do. And miraculous, miraculously, this guy survived, right? And I'm sure you've seen the video, too. He comes back from a hike and he was mauled by a fucking grizzly bear. And the first thing he does when he comes back is makes a video. And he's wearing his hat, and he's too scared to take it off because of the marking, but you can literally see like an inch gash going through the side of his skull. He's dripping in blood. He even says, he's like, my adrenaline's still pumping, but he got attacked by a fucking grizzly bear and sprayed it with bear mace and he's like it didn't do shit <laughs> it kept, <laughs> dude, it kept no mauling shit, me and he said <laughs> i thought i was gonna die but i just kind of got into a ball and he finished and walked away but bro he was fucked up i'm gonna pull it up now i'm gonna pull it up and i could probably walk it up to the screen dude that's jamie can nuts. you pull that up <laughs> yeah cringe uh damn we already have six minutes left yeah we've talked a lot that was 40 minutes Grizzly bear. I think it's on YouTube. Uh, what are we gonna do for breakfast tomorrow, man? We gotta have something big. Uh, I guess we can go to IHOP, dude. Yeah, but we have to make it quick. If we're going to IHOP, we gotta get up earlier. Oh, here it is, Ashton. Yeah. Like Damn. Bear I've seen this guy. Just had a grizzly with two cubs. Montana. Come at me from about 80 yards, and uh, I sprayed the shit out of her with bear spray. And then I went to, on my face and protected the back of my neck. She got my head good. I don't know what's under my hat. My ear, my arm. Bro. Mm. Uh, pieces of stuff hanging out. I don't know what's going on in there. And then my shoulder, shrift up. I think my arm's broke, but legs are good. Pro. Internal organs are good. I'm Eyes alive. Good. I just walked out three miles and I go to the hospital. So be safe out there. <laughs> Bear spray doesn't always work, but it's better than nothing. What a fucking G. Yeah, life sucks in bear country. Just had a oh, it's not gonna focus. Yeah, well. Come at me from about 80 yards. Bro. <laughs> and, uh, I sprayed the shit out of her with bear spray. And then I went to on my face protected the back of my neck she got my head good i don't know what's under my hat yikes dude my ear my arm oh, Ooh, damn <laughs> yeah he got wrecked man and then my shoulder shrift up think my arms broke but legs are good internal organs are good eyes are good i just walked out three miles and i go to the hospital so be safe out there. <laughs> Be safe out there. <laughs> Point proven. Uh, he was by himself. <laughs> uh, hunt, you know, that was a Montana hunter. I don't know what he was hunting. He was probably out there with his rifle, hunting deer maybe. And yeah, got attacked by a mom and, grizz and, and her babies. Grizzly bear. Uh, he got mauled up. So, yeah, if I go to Montana, dude, we're going squatted up. I'm taking a 10 mil. With the boys. We're going to take a collapsible rifle. Like... I'm taking a drone. I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna fly that shit. Do like some recon before we move to an yeah, area. Yeah, she's. Uh... Or if I see a bear, I'm gonna follow it on that drone to scare it off. Mm -hmm. And if a ranger tries to tell me, like, this is my, this is how I protect ourselves, whatever. All right, we gotta get up at five, dude. Yeah, you wanna wrap this up? Yeah. 
Gotta transfer these files.